Hello, I'm Tali Nalabandian, and during this presentation, I'll be talking about research on the narrative preferences of those experiencing depression. Now, you might be thinking about why or how it could be important to study and identify the types of narratives that depressed individuals enjoy. Well, there's a growing body of research on bibliotherapy and fiction-based narrative interventions that demonstrates how reading and discussing fiction in general relates to positive health outcomes for those experiencing both physical or mental health issues, including depression. And so gaining a better understanding of which types of narratives depressed individuals enjoy may be helpful in furthering this area of fiction-based interventions. Because in order for a depressed reader to gain any benefit from fictional narratives, they need to be, first and foremost, attending to and engaging with the narrative. Now, depressed individuals are really already pretty cognitively depleted, in part because of their tendency to ruminate, which takes up a lot of their cognitive resources. So they may not gravitate toward readings that require even more mental energy. And so identifying certain types of narratives that they can enjoy might help them more readily absorb the information they're reading and benefit from it. And so the question becomes then, what would capture the attention of those diagnosed with or vulnerable to depression? And to answer this question, we really need to turn to the characteristics of depression first. And that is depressed individuals often experience what are called depressive schemas or mental representations, where they typically hold negative perceptions of themselves and the world around them. Essentially, depression is characterized by this negative attentional bias that's often geared toward the self, where they tend to focus on negative or depression-relevant stimuli that they can relate to over and above positive or even neutral content. So for example, those scoring higher on depression use negative emotion words and first-person singular pronouns or self-focused words in their everyday spoken conversations as well as their written language more frequently than those who are scoring lower on depression. Now, another key characteristic of depression is the social aspect, or really lack thereof, as in depression is associated with this intense social withdrawal, with increased feelings of loneliness and decreased feelings of belongingness, but even though depressed individuals are in a way isolated from their social world, research also shows that they actually do socially engage more with people who they're interpersonally close with, such as close friends or romantic partners. And they're also more likely to socially engage with people who they identify with or people similar to themselves who are also dealing with negative experiences. So if we're trying to determine which types of narratives depressed individuals enjoy, well, based on negative attentional biases, as well as the social aspects of depression, depressed individuals may be more likely to gravitate toward narratives that depict some kind of 
negative depression relevant content with characters that they can relate to and identify with. And in fact, past research on depression and narrative preferences has demonstrated that those higher on depression tend to watch and even prefer films categorized within genres that involve some aspect of negative content, such as tragedy or horror, where genres like tragedy and horror exhibit a negative tone and may even have a negative ending that's often left unresolved. And so these results are pretty consistent with negative attentional biases that are characteristic of depression, where depressed individuals tend to gravitate toward and prefer such negative content. But research concerning what mechanisms might contribute to depressed individuals preferring more negative or negatively toned narratives is a bit limited. So the current study attempts to uncover these very mechanisms that play a role in a depressed individual's narrative preferences, such as the degree to which they might identify with or develop a parasocial bond with the fictional character they're reading about. Now, character identification is when the audience member is able to take the perspective of the fictional character that they're either reading about or watching on screen. And when you identify with a fictional character, you're also more likely to develop a parasocial bond with that character, where a parasocial bond is a one-sided bond between the audience member and the character. And so research shows that when you're able to identify with a fictional character and form a bond with them, you're also more likely to enjoy that narrative. And because depressed individuals tend to engage more with people they identify with and people they're close to in real life, these experiences may then transfer over to the fictional world as well where they might be able to identify with and develop a bond with a similarly depressed main character or protagonist, leading them to enjoy that narrative more. And so based on the past research revolving around narrative preferences, as well as the negative attentional biases and social factors of depression, we ran a moderated serial mediation model where we predicted that the type of narrative protagonist, so depressed versus not depressed, would moderate the correlation between depression in readers and their narrative ratings as serially mediated by readers' character identification and parasocial bond with the character. And just to break that down, essentially, we predicted that after reading about a character who's depressed, rather than a character who's not depressed, those higher on depression would be more likely to identify with that depressed character, devel develop a parasocial bond with them, and subsequently rate that narrative more positively. And so we tested this hypothesis with a sample of 539 participants who were recruited using MTurk for our online reading study. And for our study's procedure, Essentially, after participants gave their consent to participate, they read a randomly assigned short story and then answered attention check questions right afterwards. 
then participants rated the story that they just read and then they completed a series of surveys assessing character identification, parasocial interaction, depression, demographics. And then at the very end, they were shown a debriefing statement. And now on to the materials and measures. So participants were first randomly assigned to read one of four excerpts from Ned Vizzini's novel, It's Kind of a Funny Story, which is about a depressed and suicidal protagonist named Craig. And each of the four stories either involved a depressed Craig or a non-depressed Craig, and either ended with a positive resolution or a negative resolution. So because the purpose of this study was to identify narrative preferences in depressed readers based on differences in protagonist type, in addition to manipulating protagonist type, we also manipulated resolution type in our stories so that we could control for resolution type in our analyses and determine whether our results were achieved above and beyond other narrative elements. And so just to briefly go over each of the four stories and what they were about, so the depressed protagonist positive resolution story depicted a ruminative Craig who decides to die by suicide but overcomes his suicidal thoughts in the end. Whereas the depressed protagonist negative resolution story was that same story, that very same story, but we cut it short right at the climax when Craig decides to die by suicide. On the other hand, the non-depressed protagonist positive resolution story depicted a non-depressed Craig struggling with the task of map making, but then positively reframes his struggles. And finally, last but not least, the non-depressed protagonist negative resolution story was that same story, but again, we cut it short at the climax at the full brunt of Craig's map-making failure. And the efficacy of this narrative manipulation was confirmed by a pilot study demonstrating that participants were significantly more likely to correctly identify the type of protagonist, as well as the type of resolution of the story that they had just read. So after participants read their science story, they then rated how much they liked the story. So that was our narrative ratings variable, where participants rated the story on a scale of one, did not like it, to five. It was amazing. Then participants' level of identification with the main character, Craig, was measured using the character identification scale where they rated how much they were able to take Craig's perspective in the story. And the level of participants' parasocial bond, that one-sided bond between the reader and the main character, Craig, was measured with the parasocial interaction scale, And the last scale that participants completed right before answering demographic questions was the SESTR uh, to measure participants' level of depression, where they indicated how often they felt depressive symptoms within the past two weeks. And consistent with our predictions, we found that character identification and parasocial bond serially mediated the moderation effect of protagonist type on the correlation between depression and narrative ratings. And these results remain significant, 
even after controlling for resolution type. So the type of resolution within the story that the participants read. And so specifically, the sequential path of character identification and parasocial bond mediated the conditional indirect effect of depression on narrative ratings for participants who read about a depressed rather than a non-depressed protagonist. So if we look at the top model here, which represents participants who read about a depressed protagonist, we see that those scoring higher on depression were more likely to identify with the depressed protagonist and then subsequently develop a parasocial bond with that protagonist, leading to higher narrative ratings. But if we look at the bottom model here, representing participants who read about a non-depressed protagonist, there is no significant indirect effect of depression on narrative ratings as mediated by character identification and parasocial bond. So overall, results were consistent with hypotheses concerning the narrative preferences of depression-prone individuals, as well as past research on the negative attentional biases and social aspects of depression, where people higher on depression were more likely to positively rate narratives about a depressed character by way of identifying with and subsequently developing a parasocial bond with them. And so the implications of the present findings really revolve around the importance of studying depression, as depression is a main source of impairment in adults, impacting millions worldwide with rates significantly increasing since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so because depression debilitates so many, it's really crucial to determine how depression presents itself and relates to various aspects of daily life, including exposure to fiction, as a way to kind of help more efficiently and effectively diagnose and treat the disorder, especially pertaining to fiction-based narrative interventions and determining what types of narratives and narrative formulas might help alleviate depression symptoms. Now, the present results suggest that depressed individuals do prefer narratives about characters who are similarly depressed. So characters that they can easily identify and bond with. But the question is, would this type of narrative help or harm a depressed reader. For example, researchers suggest that the benefits of fiction-based interventions are dependent on the reader identifying with the main character of the story, where if someone experiencing a specific issue reads about a character going through a similar issue, then the reader could identify with that character and better simulate the character's adaptive responses to that issue in their real life. On the other hand, maybe reading a story about a depressed character who's able to overcome their issues would then highlight the discrepancy between the depressed character's positive situation and the depressed reader's negative situation. And self-discrepancy theories of depression would suggest that such a story could further exacerbate the depressed reader's condition, uh, for example, by triggering a rumination spell where they're now analytically thinking about their own condition and how even a fictional character is able to get better 
but they're not able to themselves. So part of our aims for future research in this area is to determine how different aspects of narratives, like the type of protagonist, as well as the associated interpersonal connections that depressed readers can establish with protagonists, like identification and parasocial bonds, can then influence depressive symptomology. Thank you.